suing uh, one another. I, I literally met a guy just, I think it was just last week, week before, and as we were, as we were talking uh, about his church, all of a sudden he, he just said, you know, he's, he's been attending this church for so many years with his wife. And this church is now in a court battle, two factions in this, in this church who have gone to an earthly secular court system to try and bring about some mediation to their differences. <laughs> what an incredible, um, what an, how, how much does Jesus grieve over that kind of situation in our world today? Forty-one. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Third thing Jesus talks about is, so there was this common practice by the Romans that if you were a soldier, that you could ask someone else in that country that you had now taken over, that you could ask them to carry your pack for a mile, right? couldn't ask you to do it for any more than a mile, but you could get them to take your pack for a, uh, for a mile. And yet, what does Jesus say? If anyone forces you to go to a mile, go with them too. Uh, Jesus' response to that was, hey, don't even just do the bare minimum that they've just asked you to go for, but go ahead and, and go beyond that. Exceed their request. Can you imagine the pushback that Jesus got on this one portion alone. For you and for me, we, we probably don't think of this one as being the worst on, on the list. But for so many of them, they had been invaded by a foreign country. And now these people who treated them so poorly anyway could also force you to carry something for them, which is exactly what they did time and time and time again. Listen, we even see that as, as Jesus is going to the cross in Mark 15, 21. It says, A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in the, from, from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. Literally, that, that's really just a part of, of this, this law that they had, that, that you had to help this, this Roman soldier with whatever he had. The fourth thing was this, though, in 42, and the final thing was to give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Uh, again, somebody, somebody is begging for, for something. What are you supposed to do? Jesus says, well, go ahead and give that to them. And if you are lending something to somebody, well, don't expect that back, Right? Uh, which goes along with Luke 6, 34, says, and if you lend to those from who you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. Jesus is saying that our response to others is supposed to be a charitable response to anyone who may ask for something or who may ask to, to borrow, not just in response to mistreatment or legal ruling or a forced conduct, but we are supposed to be charitable in our response in all of those areas. It isn't hard for us to, to understand Jesus saying these words. Okay, it's not hard for us to see Jesus saying these words. At 1 Peter 2.23 says, and when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, that's, that's going beyond words. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to what? He entrusted himself to him who judges greatly. These examples, these words from Jesus may just be some of the hardest words for so many of us to accept let alone follow in the world in which we live in. They completely, completely go against most everything that we have ever been taught from this world. 
But let me just say this. Jesus wasn't prohibiting the administration of justice. Jesus wasn't saying that justice shouldn't be served because, again, he has said over and over and over again that God will always make things right. But do we believe that? And so many times I think our problem is, is yes, I believe that God will make things right. Maybe not in time, though, in a timely fashion, and maybe I might just need to help him out with that. So Jesus wasn't prohibiting the administrative of justice, again, in the fact of he has placed, we've already talked about this in the past, he has placed governing authorities in our world to do just what? To help bring about his justice right? Not our justice, his justice to those who do commit crimes. So Jesus wasn't prohibiting the administration of justice. Jesus, what he was doing was this, is he was forbidding us for taking the law into our own hands. Jesus was saying, it's not your place to retaliate. It's his. What this doesn't mean for us, though, is that, is that you're supposed to be a weak person in the world in which that we live. As a matter of fact, again, Spurgeon said that you're supposed to be what? An anvil. That people ought to recognize you as a person of what? Strong, immense character. Not a bully. We know the difference, don't we, in the world in which we live in? We see bullies all the time. Is that strength? In so many ways, that's really about weakness. Weakness of character in their own lives. But Jesus has said to us that, that we should be somebody who is who's unmovable. That whatever somebody would do to us, that we would still be able to do what? Take a stand. That we would not be weak. It, it doesn't mean that we, it would cause us Uh, moral compromise. When somebody else does something to you that hurts you, it's so easy. It's so easy to fall into the trap of of wanting to get even. It's so easy to fall into the trap of of allowing ourselves uh, to uh, open ourselves up to the wrong emotions. And while emotions certainly are just that, they, they are emotions that happen, the attitudes that spring forth from those emotions, we are to control. And not to, to sin in the midst of somebody else doing something to us. Now, again, it doesn't mean that we should uh, buy into anarchy, that we would take the law into our own hands which sounds very easy for us in certain situations when it's other people. We have seen this in our own country, have we not? Cities on fire. Portions of it, I should say. Anarchy. Where, other, where, where citizens literally took control and they were allowed to have that. I get it. Our system doesn't always work the way it's supposed to. But it certainly doesn't work when we ourselves buy into the same thing, though we say, well, we're not as bad as them. It doesn't mean some sort of total pacifism that that we would just uh, roll over and not do anything. But in the sense of not doing anything, but really striking out and doing something for those who are what? Who are less fortunate. Taking a stand for those who are being bullied, whether in the context of a person to a person or a nation versus a nation, that we can stand together to make a difference. I I think the bottom line for us this morning is, is this, is that our actions, our actions should not just be directed by strict justice. And what I mean by that 
Strict justice is the fact of an eye for an eye. That's strict justice, right? You do something to me, which means I have the right to do something to you. And yet the very basis for our life in Christ is what? His grace. It is mercy. I had a saying with my kids, and I'm not saying this should be your saying. (laughs) Okay? Let's just put that out there right away. My kids would say from a very early age, Dad, that's not fair. Okay? And the phrase that I'm not advocating for you to use Feel free if you want to, not advocating for it, was I would tell my kids then they could go to hell. All right, that's that's what I said. Because that's what fairness is. Because we've all sinned. And the fairness is what? Punishment. I said, what you want is grace. What you want is mercy. And what you and I want in this world is grace and mercy as well. It's just unfortunate that when somebody does something to us, we're not so prone to the grace and mercy. So many times we're prone to the retribution, to the vengeance, to revenge, to the punishment. And I'm saying that our concern, our concern, I'm not saying the government, I'm not saying the world in which we live... I'm not saying God's concern. I'm saying our concern in those situations is not directed strictly by justice. Secondly, our concern, our concern is not with our own personal rights. We live in a country. We live in a country that teaches us about standing up for our personal rights rights life liberty pursuit of happiness and yet is that truly what God has called you to stand up for your rights let's be honest with one of that is not what he has directed you and I towards he has directed us towards what him and his right and his glory and his honor And if that is at the cost of you and I at times suffering in this world in which we live in, then that is exactly what we have been called to do. Our concern then is to do what? Is to serve other people's highest good. Wow. You want to talk about a tough situation right there all of a sudden somebody has done something wrong to me and and Jesus is telling me that my highest concern is for their good my greatest concern should be for their highest good wow that that is something that is so counter cultural that all of a sudden it is what it is this is that bottom line for the bottom line we should do more than what's expected. We should do more than what is expected. You see, our actions should bring about a surprise to those who see us, who live around us, who, who deal with us. They should, they should be surprised time and time again by how you respond, by how you act, by what you're most concerned about in this world. Because we ought to be people who are extending what? Grace. The same unmerited, undeserved grace of God that you and I have experienced from God in salvation. 